What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and as the name says, I'm an architect. Now, as architects, uh, we tend to get attracted to those unusual uh, building shapes, and uh, especially when it comes to curved buildings, uh, curved shapes, uh, I think all architects like that. Maybe it's because uh, none of the investors are willing to actually build something like that. Uh, none of the clients have the money for something like that. Maybe that's why that is so attractive for architects to design. So everybody loves Zaha Hadid designs, Frank Gehry designs, uh, something like uh, Calatrava and so on. So uh, naturally, a lot of people are asking me, because I create Revit tutorials, well, how do you create these curved, complicated shapes in Revit? What is the approach? What would be the best way of uh, creating shapes like this? So in today's video, I decided to outline the seven approaches to creating curved uh, shapes, uh, curved structures in Revit. And the first four are going to concentrate on the project environment, showing you how to use some of the basic tools in the project environment, like walls, roofs, floors, and so on, to create these complicated curved shapes. And then later on, I'm going to be showing you another three approaches inside of the massing environment, which allows you much more versatility and you can create something much, much crazier, which is, of course, what we all love. Uh, now, uh, if you're interested more in, to lear in learning something like uh, conceptual design, conceptual massing, complicated uh, advanced modeling in Revit, I have a complete eight hour course on that topic. It's available on my website. That's going to be the first link just below the video. So if you're interested in something like that, check that course out. And uh, of course, if you're interested in all of my Revit project files for each of these tutorials, all of my Revit project files are uploaded on my Patreon page. So uh, if you join there, you can get access to all of those. So that's going to be the second link just below the video. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's immediately get started by going here to models, then going to new. And uh, for this particular demonstration, I'm going to use my own Balkan Architect template. It includes all of the families that I usually use. And if you're interested in getting uh, either of my templates, you can find them on my website, balkanarchitect.com. Uh, that's going to be the third link in the description if you're interested in these templates. So anyways, let's open this one up. And then I'm as soon as Revit opens up, we're going to be covering first uh, how to use the regular project tools. And actually, we're going to be showing you, I'm going to be showing you the wall tool and also the roof tool. And how can you use these two tools in conjunction with, with each other in order to create some really interesting shapes? So let's start off first with walls. So I'm just going to open up the wall command. And then for walls, uh, for making curved walls, you only have a few options. You have the start and radius arc, you have the uh, uh, center and uh, arc, and then also you have this tangent and arc. And uh, finally, we have the ellipse tool and the uh, uh, partial ellipse, which is, well, half of the ellipse. Uh, so these are the tools that you can use. I prefer usually using arcs as they're, uh, in my experience at least, uh, the most intuitive. As you can see when the other wall highlights, that means that this is all uh, this is all tangent. So the, the whole shape is uh, should look a little bit nicer. So there we go. And then we can kind of finish it off. Can we find something that works for both? There we go. Uh, oh, okay, oh, or it doesn't work. But anyways, this is how you can use the uh, wall tool in order to, in order to just create some uh, curved walls. Now, this isn't really anything special. It's fairly simple and straightforward. Maybe the ellipse tool gives you a little more uh, interesting behavior, I guess you can call it. And then when you create your ellipse, you can make it even more partial by using the split element tool and then splitting it at a certain point. And then you can just get rid of one segment and then you can play around with this ellipse, maybe connect it to a, a different a curved wall. So if I go here to this wall and I can perhaps going to continue off something like this. But here it's not going to give you the tangent option. So you just have to be kind of careful and try to eyeball it 
uh, really nice. So there we go. Uh, that's uh, those are just some of the basic tools for creating walls that uh, look like this. Uh, but then we have the roof tool, uh, which allows us to do something uh, a little bit special with these curved walls. Uh, so uh, before we go to that uh, roof tool, uh, let me just uh, explain that for walls, if you have a straight wall just like this, you actually have the ability to edit the profile and then when you go there into edit profile so if i just go back so it's over here when you select the wall it's here on the modify tab we have the edit profile and then you can simply use perhaps the spline tool and then you can really create some interesting shapes for your walls so let's try to snap it here at the edge there we go perfect and then if i just delete these two lines this is going to look like a really cool wall. So you do have that ability, but unfortunately, whenever you create a curved wall, such as one of these, when you select it, as you can see, that's grayed out. So we don't really have that option. Uh, so what you can do is, as I said, use it in conjunction with the roof tool, and then you can create an interesting top for this wall. So let me show you uh, how to do that. Uh, for that, we have to move to one of the elevations. So let's go here into... Uh, first, let's go into level one and let's place a reference plane here on which we're going to be hosting our uh, roof. And then let's go here to reference planes and then let's place one like this. And you have to name it, that's really important. So you can select the reference plane and then you can name it here. Let's call it the ref one. We can hit apply. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you name it, just make sure it has a name. Perfect. And then uh, once you have done that, you can open up the elevation that's kind of viewing that reference plane head on. So let's open that up. Perfect. And now we can go here to the roof tool, open up the drop menu. Here we have the roof by extrusion. And this allows us to create maybe the wildest shapes when it comes to roofs in Revit. So here we have to specify the work plane. Luckily, we have created it so we can specify that by name and just choose our ref one. Hit apply. Uh, here it's going to ask us for a level. Let's leave it at level two. And there we go, perfect. Now you can use the spline tool, uh, probably because it gives you kind of the, 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 the most versatility and kind of the craziest shapes. And as you can see, you can create any type of roof that you can imagine. Let's now go back to the modify tool to escape out of that. And then you can select it and kind of reshape that. And of course you don't have to use the spline. You can use the arcs or something like that. Uh, I just prefer using the spline because it gives me kind of the most functionality of, of all of these. Uh, now, finally, once I have created this, I can go back to the 3D view, hit finish, and it's going to extend that. And as you can see, we have kind of a flowing roof. I think it looks quite interesting. Now, if I extend that over this wall, I can hover over one of the wall segments, hit the tab key, it's going to now select the whole chain of walls. And now I can attach the top base to the bottom of this roof. So once I do that, now you're going to notice that the, uh, kind of the, the walls follow the bottom of that roof. Now, in some cases, you're going to want to shape the top of the, uh, the top of your walls without adding an actual roof. Maybe it's some sort of an art exhibit or something like that. Well, in that case, you can simply select this roof and then you can hide that element and you're going to get something that looks like this, which is a very, very wild shape. And just imagine that we have only used the roof tool and the wall tool to create something uh, that looks like this. Now let's take a look at how we can use uh, floors to create some curved shapes. Uh, now for floors, what you want to do, the important thing is when you get started, you want to keep your geometry simple. So uh, let me create here a rectangular floor hit finish and then let's immediately go create a uh, floor that has five points just next to it and hit finish. Uh, now if I go here into the 3D view and if I select this first floor, if I go to modify sub elements, it's going to allow me to select elements like the, the sides or the points of this uh, floor and it's going to allow me to change the elevation of those points. Now if I change the kind of the, the diagonal uh, 
points, it's going to create a shape that's called a uh, hyperbolic paraboloid. It's a kind of a tongue twister, uh, but it's a really cool shape. It's used uh, in architecture for some really amazing buildings. I really like it. It's a very uh, efficient shape when it comes to construction. So I, I think it, it looks really cool and it's uh, also really useful and it kind of creates a curved shape uh, in a, a rectangular footprint. Now, if you were to try this with this uh, here uh, pentagon or uh, a fine pointed shape, if I go to here to modify sub elements, and if I move a couple of these, uh, you can see what's going to happen is it's uh, really going to break it into four different uh, for different plates, uh, I guess you can say. So it's not going to work with all the shape. It's not. Uh, it's not going to be organic. Uh, uh, one other shape that I like to use for uh, kind of curving floors. If I go here to floor, uh, let's try creating an arc like that, and then let's offset that by a couple of meters, just like that, and then of course cap it at each point. Just make sure that the offset is back to zero just like this and then hit finish. If I now go to modify sub elements and select this point and I can move it up and it's going to create a ramp which is really cool. Uh, you can also try moving individual points around that can create an interesting shape. I don't know. That looks interesting I guess. Anyways, so you can create some interesting shapes like this, but as you can see, it uh, mostly works with four point uh, shapes. So just keep that in mind. So let me just delete uh, these two floors altogether. Uh, now, also, uh, the final kind of the project tool that I wanted to show you for creating these weird shapes or curved shapes is going to be the stair tool. So if I go here to South Elevation, you can see that uh, I've set these levels uh, 1.6 meters apart just to have a small stair. And then uh, let's go here to the stair tool. And I'm just going to have it go from level one up to level two. And that's going to give me nine risers. And also make sure that you're using the monolithic stair. Uh, you can use the assembled stair, uh, but I found that it works not that good. Okay. So now instead of using one of these tools here, you want to use the create sketch option. So if I just go here to create sketch, it's going to allow me to go into sketch mode and then I can sketch out the stairs. So let's try with a simple arc that goes like this and then it can go like that. Perfect. Let's create another one here off to the side, maybe curve it a little bit differently like that and that's going to create a kind of a weird shape and you wouldn't think that this could actually be a stair but actually you can turn this into a stair you just have to add risers as you can see we have zero created nine remaining so let's go one two three four five six oops seven eight and then we have just one more. Perfect, nine. We can move this up a little bit, perhaps. Okay, so once we have our risers created, we also need to add a stair path. So just make sure you're using a stair path, going from the bottom to the top, hit finish, and there we go. So now if I go to the 3D view, we have a stair that's kind of following this really odd shape. Now, of course, I didn't really worry about too much about the stair, uh, the, the length and the height of the steps, but you can kind of think about that before creating this. And I actually have a full tutorial on this, which I'm going to link in the description of this video. So make sure to check it out if you're interested in creating some really oddly shaped uh, stairs. And now it's time to move over to the massing environment. Now, for that, you can access that through the project by using in-place massing, uh, but I prefer going here to families, then starting a new family, and there choosing conceptual mass and then metric mass. Now, if I just open that up, here we're inside of the massing environment, and uh, in that course that they have mentioned, the massing environment in Revit, there I show you what how to use this uh, complex environment to create all sorts of 
of complex shapes, but also how to later on turn those shapes into actual building elements. Uh, now, uh, for now, let's go here and let's add a few more reference planes. We do have some reference planes here. They actually show in 3D in this design environment. That's one of the reasons why I like it. Next, let's go here to reference plane and let's add one here and another one here. Uh, now to select the reference plane on which we want to kind of draw, we can just click on it and now it's selected. So now if we show the active one, it's going to be that one. Uh, now we can go here to model lines and then let's use a, uh, let's go with a, uh, with the, this uh, ellipse. So uh, for this, I'm just going to uh, turn this to draw on work plane just to make sure that we're set on this work plane. And let's create an ellipse that looks like this. Perfect. Next, uh, let's go back to modify, select this reference plane. Now that one is the, the selected one, the main one. Uh, now let's go to model lines, to ellipse again, and then let's create an ellipse that looks kind of like that. And finally, let's go to modify, select this reference plane, making it the kind of the active one. And then let's create another ellipse and place it just like this. Perfect. Go to the modify tool. Perfect. Now, if I select all three of these and just make sure that only three lines are selected, which you can see here in the properties panel. Now I can just simply select these, create a form, and it's going to create something that looks like this. And this is a, uh, a lofted form. So it basically kind of uh, create, uh, kind of connected all of those uh, ellipses together, creating this interesting looking shape. Uh, next, let's cover the uh, the sweeps uh, uh, and that. For that, let's select here the bottom plane and let's go here and I'm just going to use the spline through points. So it's an interesting spline tool that looks like this. So you basically place points and it's just going to be placing uh, a spline that goes through those points. Now uh, we can use this in order to create a shape. So for example, you can select the point and then that point is going to be the active reference plane. And there we can add Add, let's stick with the ellipse so we can create like a vertical ellipse like this and then we can uh, go to the modify tool select the final one making that one active and now let's go and create a horizontal ellipse and keep in mind that you can add multiple profiles here along the way. We have two more points. We can use those. In this case, I'm just not going to do so. So let's select the first ellipse, the last one, and or the, the, the kind of the, the end ones, and then hold the control key and add the line to selection as well. Go to create form, and it's going to create a form that looks like this. So it basically swept those two ellipses along this path, connecting them in a continuous shape, which looks really cool. And finally, let me show you how to create the uh, NURBS curves or surfaces, uh, which is uh, pretty much as creating a blend, but uh, instead of having a completed form, it's uh, sort of just a surface. So if I just select this uh, reference plane here and go to the spline tool, I can create an interesting looking spline like this. Go back to modify, select the middle one, do the same thing. So I'm going to create something that looks like that. And then finally, let's select the final one and create another spline. There we go. And now if I just select these three splines, go to create form, it is going to create a form out of those splines. And what's really cool about this is you can still find the splines and then you can edit those and it's going to change the shape, which is really cool. So I can move this up and the shape is going to look like that and so on. So it looks kind of like it's folded down here or something. So there we go, it, it does, can look really cool and you can create some really cool curved elements uh, just like this. So there we go, those are some of the basic approaches to creating curved shapes in Revit, both in the project environment as well as the massing environment. Now, if you're interested in a full complete course on showing off the uh, massing design environment, how to create really complex shapes and just understanding how Revit uh, creates these shapes so you can build whatever you like and then later on using that in the uh, project, well, check that course out. I'm going to leave it as the first link in the description 
version. So just to make sure to see it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick little tutorial. Well, it's not that quick, but anyways, it's a, I think it's a useful tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to comment. Uh, tell me what you think about the tutorial. Give me ideas for future tutorials. Make sure to like and share this video. It helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you back with another tutorial in a few days. Have a nice day.